You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. 21 Savage. Album is out right now as well. Now let the record show this is officially the last interview of the year. Okay? Yeah, we well, said that last week. Right. But you know, 21 dropped his project and he he flew in on the PJ. That's right. So yeah. we had to make the accommodations for 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's good? You had your party last night. I'm surprised that you even you got on the PJ to get here this morning. Yeah, I ain't even go to sleep. I ain't even go to sleep. Hold on, I got these fucking things in. I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't even go to sleep, man. I stayed up for y'all, man. You know, I fuck with y'all. So you stayed up, got on the PJ, came right here. And you going right back? Going uh, right back. Jesus Christ. Well, the album is out right now. Uh, I, the first song, of course, is the, the song that's been trending and people have been talking about. Yeah. A lot. I first heard that song and I was like, that sets the tone of the album. So Absolutely. Let's yeah. talk about the first song a lot. Yeah. You and J. Cole, I, how'd y'all get together on this joint? Um, I had met J. Cole probably, um, like last year, Made mm -hmm. in America at Jay Z Festival. I met him the same time I met um, Jay Z and Beyonce. And um, we exchanged numbers and shit. And we always just been talking like on some big brother, like giving me advice on my career and shit. Mm -hmm. So he just randomly just texted me, like, shit, I'm in Atlanta. What studio are you at? And I had my kids with me. So I called my manager like last minute, like book a session type shit. I brought my kids up there and shit. And we just vibed out. And then he just. He took the song with him back home to Riley because he drove, so he drove back to Riley. And then he sent me the shit. I was like, damn, this shit hard as fuck. He said he realized you was a stand-up dude because he saw you with your kids in the studio. Right? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. He told that story on the record. You bring your kids to the studio often? Nah, that was just like some spare the moment shit. Like, had to go up there and fuck with Cole. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, I want to talk about the evolution of 21 Savage as a rapper, man. It seems like you really started to take rap and music serious. Yeah, hell yeah. What got you to that point? Uh, I don't know. I just, I feel like I didn't sacrifice a lot in my life, like, to to be here. At first, I wasn't really taking it, like, because it was like, I didn't really know what it was going to be. But once I seen, like, what it could do and what I could do with it, and I just sat back and just thought about, like, all the shit that I've been through in my life, like, I just was like, man, I got to do whatever I can do to just do my best with it because it's like, it's like a gift for real. Are you surprised with the, with the responsibility and, and the power that you hold over a lot of your fans and kids that they really follow and respect and love what you do? Yeah, hell yeah. That's why I be trying to move right, you know what I'm saying? Trying to like evolve type shit. Was, yeah. was, was it the fact that you just been – so used to whatever you was doing in the street that when you started doing something <laughs> different, you just didn't know how to make the transition. Is this real or not so, so to speak? Yeah, it was It was kind of like that. Like, I was used to moving the way I move. And it was like, the rap life was like, different. It's different. It's like eyes on you at all times. You can't really do what you want to do. And then you got people who look up to you, so certain shit that you do gonna rub off on them. And you don't want to just lead them the wrong way, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even though, like, I come from the street, I don't really want my fans to go through no shit in the street, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I just buried another one of my close friends Tuesday, mm -hmm. like, on my kids, like, one of my main mans, like, Tuesday. So it's like, I don't want them to go through that. I want to tell my story, but I don't want you to try and live my story. Yeah, right? you're not glorifying it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The title of the album, I Am, I Was. Is, that's what that, is this kind of what that signifies? The new 21, so to speak? I am greater than I was, yeah. Mm. Hell yeah. I'm greater than I was. I feel like I am. I feel like I'm doing better. I feel like just me as a man, I didn't change. I'm trying to do the right thing. Like I feel like I'm greater than I was. Where you so, get that from? Just thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like my managers, they, they was tossing some names and shit. We came up with it. Do you yeah. ever feel like, uh, I mean, it's never too late, but do you ever feel like it, 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 it like, because when you say you just buried a close friend, do you ever feel like it could still catch up to you in some way? Yeah, hell yeah, for sure. I didn't do a lot, so it's like, you never know. See, it'd be different. Like, you got a lot of these rappers, like, they from the street, but they, like, they ain't really active. They wasn't really active in the street. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you can be from the hood. You can sell some weed. You can make you some money, but it's like, 
it's a difference when you actively like deep rooted in the street, like on another level where it's like it leads to death. So that's like one of the things that I always just accepted with it. You know what I mean? Like if that's what it come down to, that's what it come down to. Cause I know what type of energy I was putting out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I know how to accept death. So it'd be like, it hurt. But then again, it'd be like, shit, I know what type of life we live. Like my partner who just got killed. One one, like, he's a robber. That's how he do. He gonna steal your shit, take your shit, rob you, whatever. So it's like, he put that energy out there. So he already knew the consequences behind the shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it hurt because it's like, damn, my nigga gone. But it ain't like no shit why I ask God why. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You know why. Because I know why. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he I ain't thinking with me. He got killed trying to rob somebody? Nah. He, oh, okay, okay. I don't really know the details, but that's what I'm saying. He done did, he, he done did so could, much right. shit that yeah. I don't know what it could be like. Right. It could be a hit. He took the wrong nigga shit, like anything. You know what I'm saying? But R.I.P. the little D, man. Now we also, it seemed like you at that point, like uh, Kane and Menace. Remember when, when Kane wanted to, he had so much, he had stuff to live for now. Yeah. But he didn't want to die. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So even though you say you accept death, you don't want to die. Nah, I don't want to die. Yeah. But um, I mean, I feel like I didn't look deaf in the eye. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't look deaf in the eye. So it's like, I don't want to, but if it came down to it, I wouldn't be scared. It wouldn't be like a, a thing where I, I wouldn't beg for my life. I said it like that. Mm. Like if a nigga had me down bad, I'm not begging for my life. I'm no whole shit. I'm just, it is what it is. Do your thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What's making you open up so much? So much. I just remember the, the, the first couple of interviews you came in. The first interview, you, you barely said anything. And the second interview, you started opening up a little more. But now, you know, I'm looking at you and you're like, you, you really evolved. What's making you open up so much now? Giving people that, that insight of your life. Probably because I'm so out of the streets, I can kind of talk now, in a sense. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really doing shit. And then, <laughs> then it's like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of these rappers don't got no story, bro. Like, they ain't been through shit. So it's like, the ones that have been through shit, I feel like the people need to hear them people's stories. Because it's like, it's a different type of connection. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a car, you got a watch, you a rapper, you fuck bad bitches, and you party, but it's like, what the fuck else are you talking about? Like, what else have you been through? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I almost kind of fall into that category if I don't express myself when I come up here with y'all. You okay. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what yeah. made you open up about your, your personal life? Because we seen that so up close and personal, which was surprising, because you have always been so to yourself. Yeah. I don't know, it's just <clears throat> learning the game and really just learning how to be a rapper, bro. That's all. Would shit. you do that again? Would you let your personal life be so open like that to the public again? As far as what? Following you, pictures, and everything. You're talking about Amber, man. But, that, but that's his personal life. <laughs> would you allow your personal I feel life like to be ball, I feel so like, far open? I feel like Ball Without You is about Amber Rose. <laughs> You're a Ball Without You? Mm -mm. You got hit Ball Without You. This nigga is hell. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I hate you, bro. So, so why are you thinking about Amber, Sean, man? Bro. You just got to hear the lyrics. You hear Hey, look, Amber heard the song before it came out, though. Oh, you let her hear? Okay, she okay. liked the song. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Me and Amber is cool as a motherfucker. Like, it, it ain't really about her. It's just about just relationships and just, like, it's it. it I ain't going to lie. It's the, It ain't about her, but certain shit that I'm saying in the song is, like, me and her done had them discussions. Like, I didn't talk to her. I talked to her when we was together about, like, fuck your love, Amber. I don't want your love. I want your loyalty. Like, I didn't have them yeah. discussions with her. So mm -hmm. that's where that kind of came from. But it ain't just about her. Like, Amber, my dog, like, mm -hmm. she the coolest person ever. That, that was a hard line. You said you would rather have loyalty than love. Oh, God, I would. What's that mean exactly? It's like you can have a dog, bro. Like, you could love the fuck out your dog. Mm-hmm. But you ain't going to be loyal to your dog because you'll go buy another dog. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, fuck love. Love is just, all love is to me is attachment. bro. If I'm around a girl every single day, I'm going to love her. Even if I don't want to love her, I'm going to grow to love her because I'm going to be attached to her. It's just like a baby 
getting attached to his mama. That's love, right? Mm -hmm. When a baby get attached to the mama, it's love. All that come from is when I'm born, you all the fuck I see. Yeah, you yeah, all yeah, I know. Yeah. You could remove your, I could, I, a baby could have a whole new mother from birth that ain't their biological mother. Grow up and love that mother mm -hmm. the same way that they, they would have loved the real mother. You know what I'm saying? Loyalty is like an action to me. It's like, no matter what, if you loyal to me, no matter what, you're going to have my best interest at heart because you loyal to me. You know but how saying? far does loyalty go? Because you, you can say that and you can say, I want a girl that, that's loyal. But how loyal are we to them if that if the if the tables are turned? And what's what's loyalty? Loyalty is just never betraying me. And never doing nothing intentionally intentionally to hurt me. So that's what I mean by that. Like I'd rather have somebody who is always gonna have my best interests at heart, is never gonna do nothing to betray me. Versus just have somebody who just love me. Because you could kill me out of love. You could love me so much to the point that it drive you crazy and you kill me. Mm. But if you loyal loyal to me, you ain't going to never do nothing to harm me. Because your loyalty is like, you have loyalty with me. Mm. You don't want to cross me. You know what I'm saying? Now, as women watching this right now, they say, okay, so that means if I get into a relationship with 21, he ain't going to cheat on me. Because he's, he's be loyal. loyal to me. When I say loyal, I don't mean like. <laughs> I, 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 but I, I look, I don't cheat though. Oh, mm. God, I don't cheat. For real? Like, if I'm in a relationship with, <clears throat> like, a girl, like, and I, I'm fucking with her like that, I ain't gonna cheat. That's what I'm talking about. Black men don't cheat, baby. Okay. It's a movement. You hear me? I, if I'm cheating, that means she doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Before I cheat, I'm just gonna cut you off. Before I just be labeled like a dog cheating ass nigga, like, nah, we just gonna break up and I'm gonna do my thing. I'm gonna tell you I ain't ready to do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But so you feel like it ain't even just about cheating with loyalty. It's just about, like, just... I don't know. It's just like, just be loyal. Like, don't cross me. You know what I'm saying? Don't stab me in my back. Don't embarrass me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's more so what it's about. Don't just say you love me all day. Like, I don't care about that. Show me. That's the difference between love and loyalty. Mm -hmm. You can say love. You can't show love, really, if you think about it. I love, I, the most you could do is love is say, I love you. Mm -hmm. Loyalty, you can show me. Like, I left a million dollars in cash sitting in the house. You didn't steal a dollar. That's loyalty. Word, word. I'm down bad. I ain't got a dollar left. You still right here with me. That's loyalty. You can show that. You can't show love. And ball without you, whoever you talking about, does not seem like they was too loyal to you. Well, how you take that from that? Because you Explain said, to you me said, how you got that you, from that. You said she was uh, sleeping with other guys. Cause you miss me. Cause you miss her. You miss you getting drunk. Cause you miss me. That ain't. But that ain't being disloyal. Okay. Cause we ain't together. That's why you miss me. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. You just doing shit. Cause you miss me. Got you. Yeah. That's what I was saying. That's a tough tune. That could be a single. Probably so. I like all my friends too. With uh, Post Malone, you say you lost a lot of friends counting money in your Bentley coupe, but you don't need no friends if you want to know the truth. Seems like you had to like just cut some folks off. Nah, that was back in the day. Like, oh, okay, okay. Before I started getting rap money, when I just had regular money, regular street money, you know, I went through the thievery and the betrayal and all that. At a, see, I had an identity at a young age, Charlemagne. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been savage, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Before rap, like, you can go on my Instagram, go to all my pictures from before I was a rapper. Like, I always been me. I always been, I always been that nigga, bro. Really, just to be honest, like. I always had something going on. So a lot of the shit that these niggas go through when they become rappers and they get rap money, I done already rent, went through that in the street with street money. So I already knew what to look for when I started becoming a rapper and getting rap money. Like I done already been through this. So I know the sign. Oh, you going to be a fuck nigga one day. <laughs> Cut you off right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you had your circle tight before you started getting yeah. rap money. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Does, does 21 Savage have any trust issues with people? I don't really put people around me that I feel like I can't trust. Mm. It's just the same people. It's been the same people forever. Shit been running smoothly the way the way it's been. You ain't never really just seen me with no incident. My jury never got touched. Like, a nigga never ran up on me and punched me my whole career. Nobody's never did shit to Savage his whole career. Mm -hmm. And I done been to every city, and you know what I'm saying? So I think I got a pretty tight unit. Now let's talk letter to my mama. Yeah, letter to why, why was that important to do? Uh, you know, like, you know where we come from, like, 
struggling mother, you know what I'm saying, trying to do her best to make you happy. So it's like, I bought her a house. I bought her all the cars she wants. She got all the money she wants, but it's like, I want to just do something like fuck materialistic shit, like express myself to my mama, to the world. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like basically telling my mama how much I appreciate you, but instead of just saying it to her, I wanted to say it to the world. Type shit. Mm -hmm. How'd your mom react to it when she heard it? Oh, uh, she sent me some long ass messages. She's still sending them. Oh, she just heard it. She, she just, just heard it. it when the album came out. Yeah, I I ain't gonna let her hear it on here early. How you let Amber hear something early, but not your mama? <laughs> Amber had my email. Oh, she actually <laughs> Amber hacked his email. <laughs> yes. So she, so she, your mama probably been crying all morning, man. Yeah, look, you see, I see hearts, all kind of stuff, emojis, That's what it is. uh Listening to your album is fire. Keep evolving and soaring to new heights, son. I'm so ecstatically proud. Letter to my mom bought me the tears. So heartfelt. Love you to the stars and beyond. So, so proud of you. That's dope. I have to say thank you for being a great example of growth. From being a young teenager who had to go through tough lessons and learn more than most through every challenge. Now who you are today is your mom. I see you. I see the growth. I see the strength and the wisdom in you. Such a genuine soul and you really live your name. You strive and keep on striving for a better and greater. Your album... Your album T O T L. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh, which is really <laughs> on point. You are greater. Love you so much. That's dope. Oh, man. that's what real. Saying your album title. Oh, it's real. really on point. Yeah, I am. I was. Whole, Whole album, album is fire. fire. That's but what's letter up. to my mama. A lot. Four L. Can't leave without a monster. All my friends out for the night. Ball without you. Damn, mama giving a break now. That's right, mama. ASMR, break the law. I love these songs. A lot is fire. Thank you for track 14. Love. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's a great, even even at, at my grown ass age of 40, that's a great compliment when people keep telling you that you're growing and you evolving, man. Especially people that know you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. That shit feel good. That's the most important thing, really. How did that collaboration with Childish Gambino come about? Monster. Um... We was in LA. It's crazy because I wasn't even around when he did the song, but but we um we just be in the when me and Child is getting the studio, we just don't do nothing but talk for some reason. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like we don't never record. Like all the songs we got, he recorded and it sent it to me. But when we in the studio together, we just talk. But yeah, he did. I, matter of fact, he did the hook that night, and then I he sent. So he sent it with his verse and the hook after he did what he did, and I put my verse on it. So y'all got a bunch of records together. Yeah, we got we got some shit together. How that vibe come about? I mean, every people who don't know, I guess they do know he's from Atlanta because of the show, but yeah, he don't seem like an Atlanta nigga, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he. Your typical Atlanta artist, you would say. I don't want to say typical, but you know, he he. he nah, you can say typical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He ain't your typical Atlanta no. artist. He's like, I look at him like Andre three thousand. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's like. Where I put childish at. Yeah, he's like in his own world, in his own lane. And he don't really do songs with a lot of people. This is like his first feature of the year. Yeah. So, yeah. So, what do y'all be talking about? Like, he want to get you into acting, movies, what? Bro, we talk about everything, bro. Like, yeah, act, movies, money, money. <laughs> um, Like, I was just explaining to him, like, how I wanted my album to be. He was just giving me, like, advice and shit on mm -hmm. how I need to go about like fucking with other producers and you know just putting my time into it type shit you, shout out to Childish man you, you say on that record the money and fame make a monster so you think the money and fame has changed you for better or for worse nah I it, I didn't seen it make monsters it ain't make me no monster I'm still the same nigga you know what I'm saying but, but you was a monster in the street though yeah but it wasn't cause of no money though mm -hmm. I was a monster because of that iron. Facts. Yeah, we see all them pictures when you a kid with all them goddamn guns. Yeah. Yeah, where, where was your pops when 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 you were going through that as a kid? I don't know where he at. Honestly, he ain't been around. Yeah, you said your daddy Facts. was never around. That nigga too lame. That's why you. That's why you quit school, and started to shoot things. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I used to call my daddy. I man, I had my mama call my daddy. Like. I wanted a cell phone. I was probably in like fifth grade, sixth grade or some shit. And he ain't really send no money as it is. You know what I'm saying? He didn't send shit. Like school clothes, all that shit. My little sister, them daddy used to buy my shit. 
You know what I'm saying? He, Cause he was with my mom, so he'll buy everybody shit. So I just called him like, I just wanna, um, I just wanna um, a phone. Like just send me a hundred dollars a month, bro, so I can have me a little metro. You know what I'm saying? I'm in middle school now. Everybody got phones and shit. He ain't want like he sent a hundred dollars and then he just stopped sending the shit type shit. So I started selling weed to get me a phone, shit like that. But I used I used to, I ain't gonna lie, I used to be hurt by that shit. Like, damn, why my daddy won't fuck with me? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But then as I got older, it was just like, really fuck you. You know what I'm saying? I I get out here on my own. I'm a grown man now. Have y'all spoke since? Since you? I'm, I ain't spoke to him since since sixth grade. Sixth grade. Damn. Sixth grade. I haven't Damn. said not one word to him. When I got shot, he tried to call me. I ain't even want to talk to him. Period. Straight up. Did not having a father make you want to be a better father to your kids so they don't end up running the streets like you did? Nah. I ain't gonna lie. His that situation didn't affect. It didn't really affect nothing about me becoming a man. I just want to be a father because I want to be a good father. Like, because what he did, it affected me, but it really didn't affect me. Because, like, you, I didn't never have that. If I would have had it and then it would have stopped, then it would have been like, okay, it might have changed me. But I always knew how to fend without him. Mm. So it's like, you really didn't affect me. Mm. So if he came to you right now and was trying to tell you why he wasn't around, would you even want to listen? Nah. I, but I don't hate him, though. But it's like, it's, it's just like pointless at this point. I'm 26 years old. Like, I got three kids. I'm doing I'm, I'm doing kind of good for myself. Mm-hmm. So it's like. You felt like when you needed him, he wasn't there. Right. Like, I got shot. I didn't even, you didn't even come to the hospital. Nothing. Yeah, fuck a phone call. Come pull up mm-hmm. on me. On my birthday, my best friend died. Like, nigga, this your son. And if my son gets shot, I don't care where I'm at. Bro, I'm on the way to my son. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's like you when you want a car, what the hell you wanna what the hell? But shit, you know, it is what it is. How you deal with all this this, this trauma, this trauma twenty one? Like I'm talking about like seeing all your friends get killed, issues with your father, like how do you deal with it? I ain't gonna lie, bro, sometimes like late nights I just cry like a motherfucker. I don't like that's the honest to God truth, like. The other day, my partner just got killed, Lil D. Like, they FaceTimed me, Juice, my partner Juice. He he was on the phone with my little brother, Lil Harold, and he brought the phone in the room type shit. And at first, he, like, sometimes, like, shit just, it don't hit me. Mm. So it was like, he said, he was like, Lil D dead. I know who the hell Lil D is, but I just kept saying, who? What Lil D? I knew what he was talking mm-hmm. about, but I'm just try, I'm trying to force it. him to say somebody else yeah. type shit. But then, like a couple, like an hour after that, I just start, you know, you know how it be. You just start looking at pictures. Then next thing you know, you crying. Call your mama, I was crying because him and my mama was close too. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, type shit. I be crying sometimes. Sometimes I get mad. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes I get mad. It just be like, shit. I don't know. And I don't be want people to think that I, that that's driven, like that drives me. Uh, that I be doing, talking about that type of shit to um, sell records. Because it's like, I don't if it was up to me, I really wouldn't talk about it like that. But I feel like other people in the world be going through what I'm going through. So I'd rather, like, they have somebody who could, I could be like, okay, damn, he mm-hmm. going through that same shit too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the fact that you life. say that you cry, though, is, is, is good because a lot of people will never admit that they cry. Now I don't cry, this, that, and the other. So that, that's a good thing. So... When you do get into those feelings, who's there for you? Is your mom there? Is that, is that your ride, or or you take it on by yourself? I box everybody out. My mom would be mad at me for that too. I ain't gonna lie, but like, I don't know. I, every time, I just don't want to talk to nobody. I this is what I do. I will cry for a minute. Then in the middle of my cry, I will call my mama while I'm crying. Then I hang up on my mama because she'll start talking. I just hang up on my mama. And then I just not talk to nobody for like a day straight, two days straight. Damn. And then it'll, it'll go away. But it's like certain songs that I listen to, it bring that back. Hmm. Yeah, it never goes away. You just suppressing it, that's all. Yeah. But like that Young Jeezy and Keisha Cole dreaming song. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to lie. I don't care where I'm at. If that song come on, I'm going to cry. You going to tear? Like, not like boo-hoo, but yeah, tear tears going to drop, especially if I'm by myself. 
You should go to therapy, man. You ever thought about it? Yeah, I went to therapy. For real? Shit, I ain't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you, man? I was shit grown. I was a rapper. Yo, you so this was recently? This was probably 2016. What made you go? Yeah, what made you go? See, look. That the one who just died. That's Lil D? Yeah, that's that's the one who died when I got shit. Damn. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Damn. So you went to therapy in 2016. Yeah, yeah, 2016. And, and what? You My mama made me go. You didn't like it? Man, they just be talking to you. It's like man. <laughs> you supposed to be talking to them. <laughs> you supposed to be talking to them. Getting it all out. How many like, times did you go? Did you just go once? Yeah, once. Nah, you gotta go more than once, man. I ain't gonna lie. The only thing to get it out. Y'all know what gets it out. Don't say the drugs. Nah, it mm. ain't the drugs. Boy. Y'all know what get it out. That's the only thing gonna ever get it out. It's common sense. I don't want to talk about that. But that revenge. What I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not productive. It's the truth, though. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So shit, other than that. I, I think you should go back, man. Find, cry. find a therapist. Find a therapist that you can actually vibe with. Therapist's like a good producer. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how you find that producer in the studio with that know your vibe, with that good engineer that know how your vocal's supposed to sound? You got to find a therapist like that. Nah, it don't work like that, Charlamagne. It ain't no cure for pain. That's true. true. So it's like therapy. You can go to therapy and trick your mind and make you think you better because you talk to somebody for some hours and they woo side you. But I ain't doing that. I'm just going to suck it up. Keep it pushing. Thug it out. You know what I'm saying? That's the way what I do it. I I enjoy crying. I'm going to put it like that. Mm -hmm. I'd rather cry every now and then before I feel like I'm crazy and I got to go sit and talk to somebody. Hell no, nah, I ain't crazy. I'm just hurt. When the motherfuckers hurt, they cry. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. just cry, get out the cry. My oh, only God. fear is you hold that in too long and then something End up hurting happens, somebody. Then you hurt somebody. Because nah. then you just let it all out on that one person. Yep. Nah. Cause it ain't anger, it's pain. pain mm -hmm. Yeah, know what I'm saying? I it's like anger too. It it's anger too. Mm -hmm. But it's pain. It's it's more pain than anger. I'm more hurt than mad because I told you I know what comes with it. So right. I'm not mad because I know what come with it. But I'm right. hurt that it had to be like. That. I love those real emotions though, cause for so long motherfuckers would be like, "Oh yeah, my partner died. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? It's good." Like like nah, nah I ain't I ain't one of them niggas. I be hurt. I ain't gonna lie. I love my partner. <laughs> Them be my real partners. Like, you see, I was 16. Right? Yeah. Like, them my real day ones. Like, me and him used to, he was the first nigga ever let me drive his car because he's three years older than me. So when I was 14, he was 17. Out of school, he had a car. He used to let me come take his car, drive to school, pick up girl. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, them my real partners. Right, right. My real, real partners. So. Nah, I'm crying about my real partner. Right. If I don't cry about you, I ain't really fuck with you like that. That's just how I look at it. I feel like you and Offset real partners. Y'all did the y'all did the um the album together. I think it was yeah. like last year. Yeah, that my he on, he on this project on the one point five. How y'all got so tight? I knew Offset before you before I was a rapper before he was a rapper too. Really, well he was rapping, <clears> but he wasn't like established. I met him through another one of my dad partners. Sad to say, Lo. Damn. Yep, me and Lope went to middle school together. And Lope, they used to be doing this little jug shit. Pop locking? Nah, some other shit. Oh, okay. A little money scheme type shit. Like some New York type shit. Mm -hmm. But they used to be doing that. And um, I was a trapper, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But Offset them used to come to my, he used to come to my hood and do hot shit a lot. So we, you know how it be. We just end up clashing somehow. He was fucking with um some little niggas I knew. And we they um Lope introduced us first and then he started coming around them niggas and they used to hang where we hung at type shit and me and I was said man and he always fucked it with me like I was still in the street he was doing Versace and all that like but he always we always still fucked it with each other like he always still pull up bro where you at mm -hmm. like you know what I'm saying so it just the relationship just stayed up. So when you see all the success that all of y'all are having, how does it how does, does it feel surreal? Like, damn, we really It feels surreal to me yeah. because I seen his success first. And then it was like, damn, I'm up here now too. Type shit. But I was just from the outside looking in, like, I was getting a little money, but it's like, yeah, this nigga Hill done went up through the 
Mm. But I know him, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know him, but it's like, damn, this nigga done blew up. Then he was locked up, and when he got out, he like, damn, Savage done blew up mm-hmm. type shit. So that was that's kind of what it was. When did you feel like you finally made it? Like, what made you feel like a rap star? Like, a star? I ain't gonna lie, I still don't feel like a rap star. I, like, honestly. Why not? I don't know. I don't feel like I'm where I wanna be. Until I'm where I wanna be, that's when I say I'm a star. But right now, I don't feel like I, I'm thankful for where I'm at, don't get me wrong, but I don't feel like just a star yet. I feel mm-hmm. like I have potential to be a star, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when you say I am, what do you mean you are? What, what is that? I am greater than I was. Mm-hmm. I feel like, for example, like my album release party was just in my hood. And that's me present. That same hotel that we had my album release party at, I would have been selling crack at back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's why I feel like I am greater than I was. Type shit. And now where's the Travis Scott song? Because everybody was... was Saying that that they were missing Travis. Why are you holding that feature, man? What happened to that joint? I ain't holding it, man. Travis sent it last night. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna keep it 100. What song is it? Is it that song? Supposed to be on? Man, that shit is so fucking hard. Like, Travis is crazy, man. Y'all know how Travis is. He's a, 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 a perfectionist mm-hmm. type shit. He been working on that shit for a minute, but he sent it last night. And I was trying to get it, like, but they was talking a whole bunch of shit that I don't understand. But like it's what, that, you got to clear it and all that shit? Nah, it's codes and some other shit, but they going to get it on there, though. Mm-hmm. That shit hard, though. That shit too hard. So is this a feature or a whole song? Man, I ain't even going to tell you what it is. You going to see, though. Mm. It's some other shit. You said also on It ain't album. just no verse. Mm. It's more than that. Mm. I tell you that much. You said on the album, too, you crossed me once, it's fuck you forever. Yeah, hell so, yeah. So have you forgiven anyone for anything ever in life? Hell you? nah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even gonna cap. If you cross me, now if you did some dumb shit, yeah, I forgive. But if you cross me, like, no, boy, your ass ain't getting forgave. What do you consider crossing you? Um, trying to harm me. <coughs> um, trying to take me away from my family. Trying to get me sent to jail. Um, trying to take food out my family mouth. Mm-hmm. Any any one of those is detrimental. Ain't no coming back from that. Yeah, I ain't forgiven. I, I ain't forgave nobody for that. You got Project Pat on the album too. Yeah. What influence did Three Six have on you growing up? Um, honestly, I ain't started listening to them until I got older. But my like I, the OGs that I used to hang around, that's all they listened to. So it was like. I knew it, but I didn't really get into it till I was probably 16, 17. Mm-hmm. But like coming up, like that's all that but that's all I used to hear really. Three mm-hmm. Six Mafia and um Outcast, shit like that. So it's like I knew the songs, but then when I got older, I really got into it. But Project Patch has always been hard to me. He always been him, no matter what. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what made me like Project Pat. Like he always been. Memphis nigga would go rapping about some Memphis shit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. What's the next evolution of 21, man? Where do you go from here? Oh, man. Ain't no telling. Ain't no telling. The sky's the limit, really, shit. I know I ain't, niggas gonna stop comparing me to everybody else, though. There's all the other rappers that they try and box me in with remove me from that box because I ain't nothing like these niggas. Straight up. Nah, 21 can rap. I be saying that, like, I, I, it's, it's your flow and your delivery, man. Like, you, you really in pocket. Like, you, that's why I say some people are gifted, some people aren't. Like, you can rap. Yeah. Like, you, some people can just But they be saying together. I'm a mumble rapper, though. That ain't true. They ain't listening to them. They, 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 they not listening. Mm. You got bars. When you say, they mother, said it at first, but you I, say I, I don't think they still her, but JJ need a bar code, nigga. That's bars. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you snapping. You got bars. Yeah. They, they got it. They gotta give me my credit for that. But I also think too, because you from Atlanta, sometimes they can't understand the dialect. So like, they just they just say, "Oh, he a mumble rapper." They do that with Kodak, just because they can't understand the dialect. Kodak got bars. Though. That's what I'm saying. 
They just slow, man. Mm -hmm. They got to get up on the game. So the mumble rapper up. label bothers you? Hell yeah, because it be like, man, rap art, man, at the end of the day. And it's a lot of, it's this, this, this the thing too with all the old nigga, new nigga shit. I don't really look at no nigga as really an old nigga. I look at you like you got an old mindset. You know what I'm saying? What you mean? Mm. Like, when Tupac came out, right, I bet every dollar I own, the generation before him was saying the same shit they were saying about us. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But now he's a legend. So it's like, y'all be quick to jump down our throat. This is art. So how the fuck can you tell me how to express myself mm -hmm. at the end of the day? You might want to express yourself that way. You might want to say 50 million words as fast as possible with the most metaphors in the world. That's your way of expressing yourself. It ain't no right and wrong way to be a hip hop artist. You know what I'm saying? This is our art. This is our unique. This is our, he got his thing. He got his thing. If everybody wanted, wanted to be on some super rap shit, everybody would sound the same. Like, it would be pointless. We, if that's the case, we just need one rapper. Mm -hmm. What's the point of having all these artists if y'all want all of them to do the same fucking thing? You know what I'm saying? Well, the game is, they've never understood the South anyway, though. So it's just like the same thing y'all going through now. Back in the day when it was Outkast and Goody Mob and then T.I. and Lil Jon and whoever else, they was always like, all right, they're they not saying nothing. That's, that's Ain't not even just music. the South, though. They saying that shit about every young rapper, period. Because everybody sound like they're from the South now. I don't so think it's really I don't, confusing. I don't think it's that. I don't think that's the case anymore. Because you got New York artists that sound, sound like sound like they from the south. Yeah, you know they mumble rappers. You got you know it's just yeah. They sound like they from the south. Listen what's the what's music. a south sound? A beat? Because that's all the the shit that well, what they rapping about. They ain't rapping about no southern shit. They just rapping on just the southern beat. beats. Mm -hmm. So it's like. You get your rapidly rap ass on a southern beat, then. <laughs> let's see if they say you sound like you from the south. Know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Niggas got to stop doing that shit, man. Just leave us the fuck alone. Because obviously, what we doing, fans like it. People like it. They listening to it. So we, if y'all say we doing something wrong, but why the hell they listening to us if it's wrong? It might not be what you want to hear. Well, buddy, you need to go find what you want to hear. Now, stop just criticizing shit and just, because y'all don't give a nigga no game. Like, y'all don't call a nigga like, hey, man, do this, do that, do this, do that. Y'all get straight on Instagram and just talk shit. Mm -hmm. Like, and like the battle rap shit, too. I seen a lot of niggas saying, like, it ain't no limits to battle rap. It ain't. It, 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 in, in, in reality, it ain't no limits to battle rap. But it's limits to the consequences that your ass want to deal with. Yeah. So if you get on a song and say some certain shit, you can say it. Because ain't nobody there to stop you. But you got to be ready to live with the consequences that come behind that shit. Because everybody not going to battle rap you. Some people going to take it as, oh, you want to do that? They going to be trying to kill you. You know what I'm saying? I keep saying you say that, 21. Who who do you expect to throw some balls at you that you, you keep warning? Like, don't you rap about me? Nah, I'm talking about all the other okay. shit that be going on. Then niggas be acting like they just, like, you can't say certain shit, bro. That shit get your ass killed. I ain't even going to lie. Like, if you say certain shit, it'll get you killed. And them is facts. Like, these is documented facts. It's a lot of rappers that been murdered. You know what I'm saying? Behind words and saying the wrong shit. So it's like, I just be... Hoping motherfuckers be mindful of that before they like start battle wars and shit. Like it's cool, it's, but just keep it friendly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. clown a nigga. That's what battle rap used to be back in the day. But if you get on a song and call my mama a bitch and say you gonna pistol with me, that ain't battle rap, bro. That's like disrespect. Like you throwing shots. You know what I'm saying? And it's a threat. You got to take all threats serious. Hell yeah. Um, niggas better be ready to die behind that mic. Cause boy, I don't know. That's why I don't get into none of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I am, I was. I am, I 21. was. Keep telling yourself yeah, that. I'm better I than I, I was. was. <laughs> I don't want no smoke. I don't want no beef with nobody. I'm on some positive shit, man. Well, the album is out right now. I am greater than I was, my man, 21. We appreciate you coming on in and coming doing this. I know you got to go back to the A. Yeah, hell yeah. What you got in the A tonight? Another um, party? Nah, I don't really be partying like that. I'm chilling. Oh, so all the album stuff was last night? Yeah, that was last oh, night. Right, yeah, right, but right. it's still going on. Like, they got the Motel 21. 
It's in my hood. I think I'm the first rapper to ever do an album release party in his hood. I don't think nobody ever did that before. Yeah, it's in the middle of my hood, like in the middle of my hood. And it's all love in your hood, like ain't no. It's all love. Nobody hate you just because nah, you who you everybody are. Everybody love me, cause they know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They love me. They seen me come from that to that. I am, I am greater than I was. Just make sure your gun is illegal now, 21. You I ain't got no gun. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Motherfucker gonna record. <laughs> a nigga could be finna kill me. If I got down, put my gun out. Oh, he's fucking. Like, damn, I'm just about to just let a nigga kill me, I guess. You get armed security. That's Man, all. guess what, bro? This is the thing niggas don't know about. Look, bro. I'm not putting my life in nobody else's hands. Who knows what this security gonna do, bro? We don't know if he he's tested, if he's been through this. Mm. A nigga could shoot a million jump shots during practice. Then when a nigga put some defense on him in a real game, he don't make a shot. You might take off running, anything. Like, yeah, I'ma have you with me. But I mean, like, I'm not just gonna put my life in your hands, like, all the way. Hell no. Nah. But I, I see a lot of niggas, they live and die by security. That's just the way they move. I don't move like that. I got to know for sure you going to bust this motherfucker if it come down to mm -hmm. it. Because shit, ain't no telling what you'll do. So how do you move around just to pr protect yourself? Because you all worth value, so you can't make it easy for people. Yeah, but I don't, I don't really be having, I don't really run into them type people. It always be love. I don't really be moving like I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I love when niggas see me because I ain't really on that. We move the smart way, though. You know, we gone. Niggas know how we move. <laughs> niggas know how we move. All right. Well, the album is out right now, and we appreciate you for joining us. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. 21 Savage. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.